Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Rare Candy, and today we have another patron request. Today we're gonna to be checking out the new Armor Rouge EX from Paradox Rift, and I do think on paper this card actually does have some pretty cool attributes here. Its ability says if you have full HP, you take 80 less damage from attacks, which means your opponent has to do, what, 340 damage minimum to one-shot you, which is pretty good against a number of different decks. You know, that being said, you know, decks like Chen Pao can easily knock you out. Uh, also things like Roaring Moon can as well. So you might be asking, how do you exactly beat these types of decks? That's the neat thing. You don't. Joking aside, even though I do think this ability is pretty solid, the fact that a couple decks can get around this might sort of keep Armor Rouge from being sort of top tier, at least in the short term. But this attack also I do think is pretty cool too. It does 40 plus 40 more for each fire energy attached to this Pokemon. So we're going to be using the single prize Armor Rouge to move our energies from our other Pokemon to our EX. And in terms of getting our energy in play, aside from Magma Basin, which we obviously run, the other card I am choosing to include is the brand new technical machine, Turbo Energize, which we can hopefully make use of turn one to start getting some additional energies into play to be able to gradually sort of grow our damage output with Armor Rouge EX. So that's sort of our general strategy with the deck. And before we get any deeper in today's video, just a heads up, if you do need any code cards to complete this deck for yourself, you can check out friends of the channel over at ptcglstore.com. Just use coupon code RAREcandy at checkout for a discount. And Rare Candy's patrons not only had early access to this deck list, but also have their own exclusive discount code for even bigger savings. Links to those will be down below in the description. But getting back into our deck list for just a minute, early game Entebi is going to be one of our best attackers in the deck, of course, for that burning Rondo attack. So it's going to take us several turns to sort of amass enough energy to take big one shots with our EX. But Entebi is really good at hitting sort of those middle of the road numbers around the 200 ish mark to be able to knock out like basic Pokemon EXs and V still. Another card that hits really nicely in sort of that basic multi prize Pokemon damage range is going to be Radiant Charizard. So even though we can attack with the single prize Armor Rouge, this is really our only single prize Pokemon that can hit for, you know, a pretty substantial amount of damage. So sometimes we can throw this down in the late game and force our opponent maybe into like a seven prize game. And we're also playing the Babero with the Industrious Incisor's ability to let us refill our hand up to five cards. This already is just a solid ability, but this is, I think, extra important for our deck, given the way that we have built the supporter line for this list. So we do have our four copies of Iano as expected, but we also have four copies of Arvin in the deck, which will allow us to get an item card and a Pokemon tool card. So a lot of the times we are just using this to grab two cards out of our deck. So it does make the barrel a little extra important to be able to still see a few extra cards from time to time. But Arvin is, I think, really sick in this deck. This is gonna be the card that really allows us to guarantee the turn one uh, technical machine play to start getting some extra energy in play. But as you can see, we also have a four seal stone that we can grab to throw down on our Entei or the Minion. And we also have two copies of EXP share, which is another sort of important card to help keep our damage output, you know, high for our Armor Rouge EX in the late game. We have a copy of Earthen Vessel to give us a way to find energy off of our Arvins. And also Counter Catcher, speaking of cards that are good to be searched out with Arvin, is a great way we can just instantly gust up one of our opponent's Pokemon if we have fallen behind on prizes. And then from there, just 11 basic fire energies. So that's gonna be the list we're gonna be trying out for Armor Rouge EX today. Just if you can, guys, remember to smack that like button for me to feed that always hungry YouTube algorithm. And if you want another way to show your support, some new merch actually just launched over at rarecandytcg.com. Historically, you guys have been really supportive at picking up playmats from the store. And for the first time ever, playmat bags have now been introduced for you to store your mats in, along with some bundle options to pick up a playmat and a playmat bag at a discounted price together. Links to these will be down below in the description. But with all that being said, let's take this Armor Rouge EX deck for a spin. Okay, cool. We can, we can live with this hand. It's not great, but we can at least pull off the whole turn one turbo energize. Okay. I'll sit back and let them win. Show me, show me the the three Iron Valiants here plus the three switching cards. Okay, so they are playing the Entei Iron Valiant deck. I don't think there's a shot that we win this. Sorry, there's just not because Iron Valiant turns off our ability. We play low HP Pokemon so they can pick it off with Yoga Loop and Iron Valiants. 
And uh, between the damage from Iron Valiant and Entei, they can cobble together enough damage in a single turn to knock out our armors. So if we don't lose this turn, which I'm willing to bet we will, there's a good chance we still lose the game. So they just need two more Iron Valiants here. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Okay, there's the Techno Radar. If they have... Okay, they did burn their V-Star power, but they just need two switching cards. Switching card one. So this is... Uh, like, I know this is probably not a fun game to watch, but I think this does show maybe why Armor Rouge isn't the best position currently. The card's really cool, but when your opponent can just avoid your ability entirely, or in this case, just knock you out on turn one of the game, you know, it's hard to get as excited about it as you otherwise would want to. Okay, this is a workable hand. It's kind of nice. We actually open with the TM, so we don't have to Arvin for it. Uh, that being said, we might have to probably just go for Luminion and get Iono just because we need a lot of cards here. We need more than just a Battle VIP pass. But what are we going up against? That's the, the next question. We see Radiant Greninja, so this could be anything. This could be Gardevoir, Roaring Moon, Lost Box. Okay, it's going to be Gardevoir. So this seems like a matchup we might be able to win. The only thing I'm really worried about is like boss sniping attacks. So what I mean by that is them maybe bossing up a barrel or something like that and then using Screamtail or Cresselia to knock out stuff behind it. Um, other than that, I feel kind of okay just because Armor GX is so massive. It's really difficult for them to be able to one-shot it. So I think we Ultra Ball here. I mean... Yeah, we have to. We get rid of probably Earthen Vessel. And I think we need to keep our switches just in case of that sort of play I just mentioned. Maybe the baby Armor Rouge? I'm going to say sure. I don't know which ones we have access to. Okay, luckily the other one isn't prized, so that's good. So let's just go for Luminion here. And even though we could go for Arvin to guarantee the Battle VIP pass and all that stuff, we really just need a lot. <laughs> we need a lot more cards than what we currently have. So we really just want one Battle VIP pass and maybe a way to draw cards off of this Iono, ideally. <laughs> I love how we play four Battle VIP pass and one Nest Ball and the only one we hit is the single copy of Nest Ball, which feels like trash. So let's go for Nest Ball, get the Bidoof. I would have liked to have gotten one more basic down because a lot of the guard of our list right now are playing Avery. And <laughs> I would love to be able to chuck away this Luminion. That would have been amazing. So I think we just do probably both of these. That's fine. And Turbo Energize. Or maybe we should have saved the uh, the EXP share on the Char Cadet. Because if they have a way to knock this out, we just lose EXP share. So, yeah, actually, in hindsight, this is probably a misplay on my part. Just got just a little too ahead of myself there. Just started slapping down tools. Uh, yeah, I should have literally just thought five seconds ahead there. Uh, but hopefully we don't get punished for it. Ideally. And an I Ono. Oh, I'm cool with that. Okay, not too much changed. <laughs> we basically just gained some energy in an Ultra Ball, but it's pretty similar other than that. It's a pretty easy Ultra Ball though. Probably just toss away the TM and Fire Energy next turn. So really just hoping our opponent doesn't get like a big rare candy guard of our Cresselia play. Or Screamtail, for that matter. Either one would be really annoying for us. I mean, our opponent's gone through quite a few cards so far. We haven't seen Candy Gardevoir just yet. 
So we really just want like one more turn to get going because right now, like we're not drawing dead, but things have just been a little bit clunky getting going. Okay, thank God. I was really worried they were gonna have a, an explosive turn there. All right, so we definitely just do this. Grab our EX. And this even could be a decent turn just to try to KO a Curlia. I don't hate that, if I'm being honest. Start taking out some of their draw power. Because if we I Ano, oh we're also forced to have to get the other Armourouge to be able to knock this thing out. So I think we just do this. Bring up Curlia. And we could get down Entei as well, which I don't hate. But I think for the moment, we're just going to go for the KO. Because one thing that could be annoying is if they, like, boss Entei and snipe the, the baby armors that has, that's unevolved. Okay, Manaphy, that's actually a relevant prize here in this matchup. Only thing I don't like is our board is kind of clunky right now, but it could be worth getting down Manaphy and saving our last bench space for another Charcadet. Because you always sort of want three Charcadets or, you know, Armourouge pieces at any point just because you sort of want your EX and your baby one. And then if one of those gets knocked out, you have that third one in play that can re-evolve into the one that you need. So that might be sort of the, the board we're going to be looking at. Okay, there's the rare candy. So that's fair. Our opponent, uh, they let us have a turn without getting attacked last turn. So uh, it's only fair they're able to pull it off this time. Just really hoping our Char Cadet can live to see another day. I honestly don't mind losing the Bidoof just because we have a three card hand. Okay, Artisan, love to see it. We definitely need that. We still have not seen a supporter from our opponent this turn yet. Okay, they're chucking away an Iona, so they must have something in their hand if they're going to be getting rid of that. Okay, but they're getting rid of the Screamtail. Interesting. So maybe they're doing that to get a Baby Guardi here or Cresselia. Okay, yeah, Baby Guardi. I guess they're just trying to see some more cards here. But the Screamtail and Cresselia both seem really good because Armourouge is really annoying to get through. I think as the guard of our players, so being able to just sort of ignore this and pick off things on the bench might be the way to go. But yet again, still have not seen a supporter from our opponent just yet. And they did chuck away an Iona, so maybe they're thinking about using boss's orders to knock out Luminion. That wouldn't be awful either. Okay, but we're finally going to see them use Psychic Embrace. Just what are they going to attack into? Like, the fact they got rid of Ionu makes me think they have boss, but we'll have to see. Ooh, counter catcher, okay. And they are gonna knock out the Luminion. I'm actually, I actually don't hate this, if I'm being totally honest. Just because we just need to set up our board a little bit better, but Still kind of annoying just to give up two easy prizes like that. We probably play Ayano here. So I think we could Arvin to guarantee um like armors or something, but I think we're just going to Ayano here. Yeah. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. Now we can use Artisan to get the Char Cadet. And we have the Bidoof to go with it. So that worked out pretty well for us. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And I do want an Ultra Ball, but I don't want to get rid of our Super Odd. That could be important for us. So we'll just do this. I think we have to like kind of save this hand. Like, I'd love to be able to evolve this guy. I mean, maybe we maybe we even evolve this into um, <clears throat> another EX. I don't hate that either. But if they knock out the barrel somehow, 
it could be worth saving this to be able to grab our second bow barrel. So yeah, I think we're just gonna go for the KO here. If I had a supporter in hand, I think I would feel, or like a draw supporter, I think it would have felt a little bit more comfortable playing the Ultra Ball. But I think also ideally, I would like the Charcadet with EXP share to be the baby Armor Rouge. So I'm just trying to think like, I'd kind of like to get all of this energy onto a different one and then be able to evolve into the baby one. So you can see kind of how getting down that EXP share is actually messing up, um, you know, how I'm playing this, this game a little bit. And yeah, if they actually get a KO with the Cresselli here on this Charcadet, that could be super annoying. And I'm not sure what they're thinking about attacking with, but it seems like they maybe should have retreated before uh, evolving into that Curlia. So if they do use Cresselia, I actually, I kind of hope we bait them into knocking out Manaphy so that they can use Screamtail on future turns. I'm hoping that's what we can bait them into. And I don't know, it kind of feels bad. I, I kind of liked our hand ready for the next turn there, but... We definitely had a few options, but the four seal stone plus Entei is eh. Like we really don't want Entei down, I think, uh, anymore. Like ideally, if we're gonna have a multi-prize Pokemon play, I think it just needs to be Armorouge, just because Entei is way easier to knock out than, than this guy. So they will be able to do 80 damage with Cresselia. Just a matter of who do they want to knock out here? I'm hoping they get baited into chasing down Manaphy instead. To like try to set up for like a scream tail play on like like another turn but this would be really annoying if they took out this char cadet here so are they gonna punish me for my bad um i guess management of my tools there one thing we haven't seen yet is also magma basin it's probably a car we need to start being able to use for future turns Okay, there's Baby Guardy. And this actually isn't like an awful turn to use Arvin instead, because we kind of want to save our Ionos for like the very end of the game to maybe make it difficult for them to close this one out. But I'm kind of hoping they knock out the Manaphy here because we can use Arvin to grab the Super Rod and put it right back down, hopefully, because they have the Artisan in play for us. Okay, and they are going to go for the Manaphy. That is sick. Love to see it. So. Do get Iano, but I really want to save this maybe for next turn. Yeah, I think we're just going to go for Arvin and guarantee the Super Rod here. Uh, let's do Armor Rouge, Manaphy. And I don't think we want Luminion. I really don't. I guess Luminion could be good for like the final turn of the game or something, but... And for that reason, I think we're also just gonna get down the Forest Seal Stone. I don't think this card really matters anymore. So we'll do this. Uh, we will Artisan. We don't wanna draw into the Manaphy. We'd prefer to draw into something a little bit different here. Uh, hopefully we don't get Ionid because we would lose ours, which we're going to need for the next uh, turn. But yeah, from there, just going to knock out the Cresselia here. We've been kind of fortunate that just doing the flat 120 over and over has been sort of enough to, to keep us in this game. Now, the good news about being tied on prizes is that Counter Catcher is also turned off for them right now, too. And more than likely, they're only playing the one boss. So we might not have to worry about like gusting options much here. I'm just trying to think how we're eventually going to close this game out. I feel like it's going to have to be. We eventually just get so much energy in play. We can do a big attack on Gardevoir or at the very least, if we can do so much damage to Gardevoir, it can't accelerate energy. That also would uh, maybe win us the game, but there's going to be Cresselia. 
Uh, I would assume they're gonna take out Manaphy again. Just hopefully they don't Ionu us, because I want to Ionu them. That's really what we want here. Now, what could be annoying is if they get down like a cape on Cresselia. If they did that and knocked out Charcadet, that could be bad. Ugh, collapsed. That feels bad. Um. Well. Yeah, we have to do the Bidoof because if, if we do this Charcadet, I think they just target it down the other one. And we still have a barrel in play as well, so... So who are they going to power up here? Looks like they've been... Okay. Yeah, we know 20 had to come onto the Gardevoir at least to retreat it. Okay, and it does look like they are gearing up to attack with Cresselia. And I guess this actually is sort of taking away maybe the, uh, like the boss stall play on Gardevoir I talked about. So if we ever do have to bring this up, we probably are going to have to actually just one-shot it. Otherwise they probably will be able to just retreat it. So, pow pad. Two Ionos, okay. The annoying play they could eventually do is maybe go Iono, Scream Tail, knock out the barrel. And yet again, they are gonna chase down the Manaphy, okay. So, and I'm glad we got to keep our hand because now we can put them down to like a you know, next to nothing as far as their hand size goes so we'll do this I mean I might even just still evolve this other one that has the energy and Iono okay Magma Basin that's cool We'll do this. I think we'll just attach to the active as well. And it'd be nice to get maybe another Charcadet too. Okay, we do not. Now what we could do, this actually could be a good turn to counter catcher and just take out their baby Guardi. Kind of like that because right now, Cresselia is really not too much of a threat. So I think, I think that's what we're going to do guys. So let's, chase this thing down. I'm just hesitant to Magma Basin over here in case they boss up Armor Rouge. That's something I'm a little bit weary of, I guess. So maybe we preemptively just send all of our energy up here. So I think I'm just trying to set up like a big boss play onto Gardevoir for next turn. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do in case they do take out the Armor Rouge because we really just want to win next turn if we can. And I think I'm actually just going to get rid of both of these as well. I mean, Zard's not bad to have either. I don't think I really want to get it down, though, if we don't have to. So, yeah, we'll just smack for 280. So if they do Ionu us, we at least have an energy and discard to get back with our Magma Basin. Okay, Arvin, don't care about you. I really just want boss next turn. That's the big card we want to see. Next question, too, is... Do we think they have any way to actually one-shot us with their deck? I think it's technically possible for the Baby Guardi to be able to. Like, with enough Shining Arcanas and the, uh, you know, the cape to extend it to HP. I think it's technically possible, but it might be a little bit unlikely for the moment. Because I think they need 10 energy on their, their Baby Guardi. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get there, though. Yeah, so they would need 10 so I think we're probably safe in that regard. And there is the Iono. Okay. That does get us closer to boss if they... Okay. We have the boss. We just need an energy. And we have the game, guys. 
So we need them to not bump our magma basin. Okay, Glade, not too worried about that one. But right now, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't know what this last card in their hand is, but uh, it needs to be something insane. <laughs> uh, it needs to really just be a stadium. That's the one card they could theoretically have that would get them closer to denying us the win here. I think we're good. It looks like right now they're just gearing up for the swirling slice. I mean, and this makes sense too. They're basically saying, hey, like, I'm just going to two shot you and, you know, hopefully that's enough. Because after they soften us up with this, Miracle Force should knock us out, right? Because they'll be doing 80 this turn and then 190. So, like, from their perspective, this I definitely still feels like a good spot for them to be in. But we got the boss and, yeah, they don't pump the stadium either. So, guys, we got this one wrapped up. Uh, you can see that Ultra Ball there on the last turn, setting up the energy in this card, really coming back to help us there. All right, so we got this one, guys. So we're going to go for the Magma Basin. Get another energy in play. Let's see if we can get another one. Let's see how much damage we can max out at this turn. So we'll move this up here. Boss Big Guardy. Are they going to concede before we can pull it off? Uh, we don't have another energy. That's fine. But either way, still Scorching Bazooka. Going to do 320, one-shotting a clean Guardy here. So, feels good. That was actually a really good game. Really back and forth. Uh, happy I never got punished for like my bad EXP share placement at the beginning of the game. But uh, other than that, I think I played that one pretty decent. That's going to wrap up things today for the Armor Rouge EX deck. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do think this card is pretty cool on paper. I think both this ability and this attack have a good bit of potential, but I just worry that this deck isn't the best positioned for the moment. So maybe after another rotation and a few more sets get added into the mix, maybe we can revisit this and maybe it will be living more up to that potential. Either way, I hope you guys did enjoy today's content. Of course, if you did, remember to smack that like button for me. Or if you're feeling a little bit extra generous, you can always become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.